This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me, and He's calling me. Good morning, Tallahassee. It's Monday morning, 11.30 a.m., Wave 94, 94.1. And you're listening to Escape to Heaven, Servant Marcia with Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. I woke up this morning saying, am I on earth? Am I awoke? Am I asleep? Am I in a vision? Am I tired? Am I refreshed? Where am I? And so that brought me to... Am I raptured? How do I be raptured? What do I qualify? What do we need to do in order to be raptured? You know, so many people are talking gloom and terror and horror and the last days. And oh, my God, there's another side to it. The rapture. And um, I want to feel like and know in my heart that I qualify. And then again, has the rapture ever happened before? Um, can I believe that it's real? If you take God's word and you believe that the word of God itself is real, the Bible, the scripture is real, then you know that the rapture is real. Okay. Because the rapture is not new. It's happened before. It happened with Enoch, the first recorded rapture that we're aware of, we being today's society. So if we go to Genesis, the fifth chapter, and we start at about the 18th verse, we'll realize that Enoch's father, Gerard, uh, had lived 162 years. And then he begot, that mean that him and his wife, uh, received Enoch. Okay. And after he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So he lived for like 962 years. Wow. Okay. Environment was different. Relationship with the Lord was different. And then Enoch lived for 65 years and then he begot Methuselah. Okay. And after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years. And he had like sons and daughters, you know. So all of the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. That's the first instance of a rapture. And when you look at the life of Enoch, you saw that he was highly productive. Um, But the key element, though, is that he walked with God, meaning that on a daily basis, he was communing with the Lord. He lived spirit-filled life, Uh, not maybe in the way that we view spirit-filled, meaning spirit of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy, yeah, inside of us. But he lived... Worshiping, praying, singing, communing with God. If you ever read, and I think I'll bring it back uh, on the radio, the book of uh, Enoch, and you'll see what walking with God is all about in those days. I mean, he would go away uh, and, and depart from his family uh, for days in a week, and he'd come back out, and then he got to the point where he be with the Lord for months, and then he'd come out. And every time he'd come out, it'd be like Moses, how that light would be on him because he had been with the Lord. And then he would give out words of wisdom uh, to those that many, many. He he literally reigned over the earth for a while. And all of that is not in the Bible, but it is in the book of Enoch. So he pleased God. 
I think of in Hebrews, it said by faith, he knew that he pleased God. So when we're getting ready mentally, spiritually for the rapture, we need to look in the Bible at some of the instances where the rapture actually has already occurred. Uh, the second recorded um, event was Elijah, Elijah the prophet. He was raptured after the big event at Mount Carmel with um, Jezebel. Um, he was raptured. He did what the Lord said, that still small voice, and he anointed um, Jehu, and I believe he anointed Elisha and uh, so that Elisha could continue the prophetic ministry on earth after Elijah. And on Second Kings, I believe it is the second chapter, it said, and it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And he said, stay here because the Lord has sent me over to Bethel. And Elisha said, oh no, as the Lord lives <laughs> and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So together they went to Bethel. You know, Bethel means the holy place. And once they got to Bethel, then Elijah said, okay, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And Jericho means like a place of concealment, a place of retirement. And when they got to Jericho, then he said, the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And Jordan is the very place where our Lord Jesus was baptized. I got baptized there. Um, many people have gone to Jordan uh, because that river flows uh, there by Israel. And it's like it's considered the river that goes down. I don't know what all those three different locations mean other than to say that when you're preparing for rapture, you must be holy. That's number one. Uh, God said, be holy because I'm holy. So number one, there's an element of holiness and preparation. There is a time of concealment, meaning segregated and um, the river. I don't know. I mean, I guess you go down one creature and you come up a new one and that's a uh, anointed, appointed and chosen by the father. And think what uh, the voice. Thank you. Holy Spirit just brought that to me that when Jesus was being baptized, uh, there was a voice from heaven. It said, behold, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And so the common denominator with being ready for the rapture is that you must know by faith and even in Jesus instance, by confirmation from heaven that you truly please God. It's not man that you're pleasing. It is God that you must please. Amen. So as we prepare for the rapture in today's chaotic life that we're all living right now, you want to understand that holiness is a part of a key component of being ready for the rapture. Amen. And I think about when Jesus talks to us in Matthew, the 25th chapter, we're talking about I want to get raptured and I need to know, like, how do I be ready for the rapture? OK, uh, a lot of people say everyone is saying, look at the time, look at the season, look at all the wars, look at the changes in climate. Just look, look, look. And everything's being fulfilled and people are filled with wisdom. And these are the days that the angel Gabriel mentioned to Daniel to close the book up because it's not for you, but in the future. And here we are the future that that angel referred to. And so a part of all of those signs is being ready when Jesus comes to grab his people, his children, you know, his bride. You must be rapture ready. And what are the elements what do I need to do? What are the characteristics of being rapture ready? Matthew, the 25th chapter, talks about the kingdom of heaven. 
And rapture means going to heaven, leaving earth. Okay. Shall be likened to 10 virgins who took their brides and went out to meet the bridegroom. So the uh, marriage ceremony uh, in the Far East consists of the bridegroom going away to make a place ready for his bride and then coming back to collect her and take her to his the new place that they'll be living. So the bride literally goes out to meet the bridegroom when a trumpet is sound. So it's so funny how everything I'm saying is tying in to the rapture, but it's also tying into a marriage. And so the purpose of the rapture, by the way, is to get married. It is to be transformed from just being a, um, a bridegroom or a bride, rather, the church, to becoming a wife. That's what it's all about. Okay, so let's read the Bible. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. The foolish uh, took their lamps, but there was no all. So that means they had the form of godliness. They had the design, but the Holy Spirit was not active, was not flowing through their lives. The wise took all in their vessels with their lamps. So while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps so they can see the way to the father or to their bridegroom. And um, the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your all for our lamps are going out. So Jesus said, he's the light of the world, right? And being ready for the rapture means that you continue to be the light of this world. You cannot have your light to go out. And in order for your light to remain and to be illuminated in this world, Holy Spirit has to be inside of you in your vessel, You know, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, remember? So the foolish said, give us some of your all, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us. And you need to go to those who sell it and buy it for yourself. So while they went to go buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready So that's another key element. You must be ready for the rapture. You must be Holy Holy Spirit filled and led. must be living a lifestyle of holiness. Be holy because I am holy. Okay. And so those that were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. So what we must do is be ready. And if he said, I do not know you, that means they were not doing what Enoch did for 300 years. Uh, He knew the Lord and the Lord knew him. He communed and walked with the Lord. That means daily conversing, his conversation, meaning his lifestyle, uh, the Lord was at the beginning and the end of his life daily. So if you do not maintain relationship with the Father or with Jesus, you cannot expect to be raptured. Rapture is literally Jesus calling himself to himself. When that trumpet sounds, I want to be raptured, but do you really want to be raptured? Because there is preparation for rapture. You're listening to escape to heaven. So escape to heaven while we're alive here on earth. Okay. I understand desiring peace and a moment to breathe, but what about before the great 
tribulation and it gets to the point where even the Lord himself says that none, none would live. Uh, uh, even uh, the elect is it's for the elect's sake that tribulation is shortened. That's going to be a very horrible period of existence. And we, with any common sense or spiritual sense, you can see that we are spiraling almost out of control to tribulation period of time to um, it barely ever rains. It almost makes you feel like we're living through a type of drought, even here in Florida, and we get rain, but it doesn't appear to be enough. So all the signs are there. And if the signs are there, then the likelihood of rapture also exists. Following Jesus, I'm going to John, the eighth chapter. And here, Jesus is actually speaking to the Pharisees and he's in the temple and uh, he's saying how he's going away. And he's mentioned this before, like, or, or he will mention it again, like, do not be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, right? Because I'm going away to prepare a place for you. So now he's telling them here, I'm going away and you will seek me. And if you had not uh, gotten converted, you're going to die in your sin. And then you're not going to be able to go where I'm going. That's what Jesus is trying to convey. And, um, you know, he's explaining that I'm not from this earth. I'm from above. And you are from beneath. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I say to you that you will die in your sins. Okay. If you not, if you do not believe that I am he, the son of the living God, the Messiah. Okay. So that's another key. We have to believe that Jesus was in fact the son of God. And um, that in actuality, he died for our sins. He, he was substituted. He was the sacrifice for our sins. And uh, he's letting us know that when you lift up the son of man, he's talking to the Jews slash Pharisees. You will know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself, but as my father taught me, I speak these things. So then he's also saying um, that if you abide in my word, then you are my disciples, okay? And uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We're just kind of mentioning elements of becoming rapture prepared. And we're walking down the path. We see that you must commune like Enoch did. Um, Elijah, uh, you must know that you know that you belong to the Lord. Okay. And uh, then you must travel the path that the Lord gives you. He gave Elijah a path to follow. He had to go to three distinct different geographical locations in order to be raptured. First, he went to holiness, Bethel. Then Jericho, concealment and, you know, retired and separated from the things of the world. And then Jordan. And Jordan is the spot where God said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. So for me, Jordan means a, a, a geographical, a portal almost where God speaks and declares that I'm pleased with you. We want to be raptured, but we must understand the principles and the practicality of how to be prepared for rapture by looking at and reading the Bible and seeing where rapture has occurred before. In John, the eighth chapter, Jesus is saying that, um, you know, it's not enough to be Abraham's descendants geographically. I mean, naturally, DNA wise, <laughs> uh, because he was telling them, you're, you're his descendants, but you're seeking to kill me. So if you are really Abraham's children, then you would do the works of Abraham. 
Uh, and that means that you would love God. You would love Jesus. You would love the word. Okay. And so if you are of Abraham, then you are of God. And he who is of God hears God's words. And therefore you can hear God and you can follow God. If you're not of God, then you can't hear him. And that's what's going to happen in the rapture. There's going to be this trumpet sound. But if you can't hear it, that means that natu- that you are not of God. You have to be able to have maintained a relationship with Holy Spirit so that when the trumpet sounds, you hear it. <laughs> so... He is saying that most assuredly in John, we're still in the 8th chapter, 51st verse. um, I say to you, if anyone keeps my words, he shall never see death. If anyone keeps my words, he shall never taste death. So in order to be raptured, you must keep the words of Jesus. Um, You must be like your spiritual father, Abraham, okay? Because you would know God because you would have been communing with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham uh, rejoiced to see Jesus' day. And so this is Jesus, like, in a way, preparing uh, those who listen and letting them understand that if you are not of God, then you're the devil. It's only two. And the devil representing supreme rebellion against God's ways and God's word. That's what devil is, the adversary of our soul and the adversary also of our father. Over in First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, if we look there, we say, so this is the will of God. So we already know now you want to be raptured, then you got to obey the will of God, right? If you're you're of God, you're of Abraham, so therefore you're obedient. So for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that's personal, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess your own vessel and sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, Okay that you should not take advantage or defraud your brother uh, because the Lord is the avenger of those that do that kind of thing. Uh, God has not called us to uncleanness, but to holiness. And so it's not surprising that Elijah, before he was raptured, he said, God has called me to Bethel and Bethel stands for holiness. So therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. I'm literally reading from the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 4th chapter. And so we're to have brotherly love. All right. And um, you must uh, love your brothers. You must lead. You should aspire to lead a quiet life, not a busy body. You know, uh, mind your own business and work with your own hands and walk properly uh, towards those who are outside and you that you may lack nothing. So you're supposed to be self-sustaining because of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. Then you must believe that Jesus died and rose again and that God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remaining until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep or dead already in Christ. For the Lord himself, see, this is why you have to be able to hear. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And guess who rises first? The dead. And the dead in Christ will rise first. When I read that just this moment, it just came back to me that there was another rapture. I don't know if I can find it quickly, but when Jesus 
uh, was crucified. Um, the graves, the graves of all those people opened. I mean, so that's another rapture <laughs> that occurred. Okay. So the rapture is not new. You can trust God's word. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So how to be rapture ready? Okay. The Lord has told us, the Bible tells us, the scripture tells us, and we have observed the lifestyle of Enoch, the lifestyle of Elijah. Okay, these were people that were raptured and never died before. Elijah and Enoch have never experienced death. So therefore, God's word, Jesus' words are actually true. Rapture is not new. It is a God principle. It's a principle of the creator. And the primary elements to being ready for rapture is one, Walking with God daily. Two, pleasing God. Three, holiness. Four, sanctification. I mean, five, I would say knowing and understanding and believing in your heart. Uh, I, I, I don't even want to, I'm going to go to the Bible, but it's Romans the eighth chapter where we, we know that we have been uh, justified, uh, glorified, called, ordained, chosen, all of that. And that's Romans, the eighth chapter. And that's where it says here, verse 29, for whom he foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also called, and whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. So we must know in our heart by faith that this is our reality. And if you know that, then guess what? You're ready. You are rapture ready. And my uh, prayer today, I'm going to go into prayer right now. Father God, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we thank you that you have given us proof positive from your word that the rapture is real, Lord, and that we do have a great part to play because we must remain and be rapture ready. Lord, you showed us in uh, Matthew about the virgins, how they were all uh, called living holy, but some of them did not go all the way, Lord God. They didn't do the sanctification part. They didn't maintain the activated status of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Lord, we ask you to look down upon us, your children, Lord, and help us to be rapture ready. Help us, Lord, to know that our light upon this earth we are the light that you have left, that we are your ambassadors, Lord. And our light needs to remain shining, Lord God. We ask you for your grace, your mercy, your power, Lord God. We ask you for wisdom as we live this life. There have been those before us that have lived life in totally dark environments such as Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, your servant Lot lived there, Lord God. And and, you know, Abraham himself was pulled out of or God, which is a highly idolatrous lifestyle. But God, you have proven that it's by your spirit that we can remain and be rapture ready. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for just letting us know that we are your children and that we will be with you. We will live with you. We, we will not only be the church that becomes the bride, but we will become married to your son and reign with your son. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Lord, for rapture ready. Amen. God bless you, saints of God, and those that stumbled 
on this and I pray that you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and begin your journey as Elijah did to be rapture ready. Blessings upon you. Bye. Next week. Anybody want to see you love?